death the first four years of his life. Not many people know this. And he had a speech impediment. Welcome back! Another roaring episode of Anatomy Shaving. Roaring! I'm Matt Pisarsic, and this is Douglas Smythe. From phoenixshaving.com. See what I did there? Yep. Um, anyway, so... Tis the season for... Stashes. Stashes. Facial fur. Facial fur in all of its facial fur glory. In fact, we're here today to create a greater facial awareness, if you will, on all things, well, as we mentioned, facial fur. Um, I mean, granted, I, you know, I like, I, I, I've been known to dabble as an uh, owner slash operator of a mustache, so I feel it fitting for this Movember season to, um, pretty much been saying the same thing over and over again, right? Yeah, so today we're gonna just dive right into how to take care of your mustache and or goatee. And or guinea pig. Really anything that grows on your face. So let's just start right in on it. Um, what did you, what, what, what did well, I let's, bring? Let's see what you got. What did I bring? So some of the products we sell, and I think they're pretty good. This is a badass little mustache comb from Captain Fosswitz. I hope I'm saying that right. Fosswitz? Foss, Fossets? Fossets. Fossets. First of all, folks, growing a mustache. It's Movember. This is what you'll be doing. It's not just Movember. It's any time of year. This is our Movember episode, Matt. We don't know that. We do know that. <laughs> this much we know. <laughs> so rather than jump into Matt already combing his mustache, let's talk about phase one. Uh -huh. Growing the mustache. First off, you need to go through puberty. <laughs> That is true and very important. Also, genetics will play a part in this as well. Yeah. So before then, you could always just glue some pubes <laughs> onto your face. Which is what looks like. Anyways, so Movember. Movember is done to um, cre create awareness around different forms of male cancer, prostate cancer, so on and so forth. It's been going on for the last like. 10 years now, 15 years, I don't know exact dates. I participate in every year, however, and raising lots of money for it. Uh, and also getting, convincing a lot of guys to grow a mustache for the first time. Because some people think they're pretty creepy. <laughs> and on some people, they are. That is true. Um, you know, not everyone can pull off uh, a stupid looking handlebar mustache like Doug. And I, I need to mention too, I have no product in my mustache right now. This is how it naturally looks. And I'll be putting some product in during the show to yes. give you a little heads up. No, but seriously, not everyone's face is meant for a mustache. Um, I did try and I didn't give it, you know, Doug said this took about a year and I commend him for the effort. I could not make it past about a month. I looked like a creep. But he did make a lot of mistakes that typical newbies will do. I mostly did it because uh, my son was born around that time and I wanted him to see photos of me and just be like, what was dad thinking? And so I, I did it for that purpose because what was I thinking? But that being said, taking care of your mustache, I think- And like, I'm the weird one here. Yeah. Douglas said it uh, first, you have to just let it grow. And I think that's one of the mistakes I made was I didn't, I couldn't stand it getting into my mouth. So I kept on like cutting with a pair of scissors. Yeah. Like right above my lip, but well, I let the sides grow out. The thing with mustaches is like no one ever teaches you the right way to grow a mustache. It's a lot like shaving uh, in the past like 20 years. If only there was a website called like how to grow mustache. Dot like. com. Uh, but no, what, what you'll see is a lot of times kits come with like little trimmers too. They'll come with a, a comb, trimmers, and mustache wax. This throws you off right there. This sends the message that you should be trimming your mustache. You should not be trimming your mustache if you're going to grow a decent mustache. If you're going to you like want to comb it all out, you need yes. to grow it out. If if it's getting in your mouth and whatnot, you need to start using wax right away. Uh, if it's too short to really get the most out of your wax, you just have to deal with it. But I mean, it really is not that bad once you start doing it. But a little wax, flipping it under. For the rest it. of us in relationships with women. Um, <laughs> you know, with we, women? <laughs> training it too. You want to constantly be tr uh, training the mustache, combing it side to side. Uh, when I get out of the shower, the first thing I do is comb the stash. Don't put any product in yet, except for alum. That's right. You put all of them in your stash. In my stash. This is an old barber's trick. Salty. This is used to be uh, used as, um, well, aside from an aftershave, it was also used as a quick, light hold in the hair. So you can use that. I, I think it came on this, come upon this myself, rather. But I started putting it in my mustache when I get out of the shower before I put any product in. Uh, and then I just let my mustache to dry as I'm eating breakfast or whatnot. And before I leave the house, that's when I put the wax in. But I've already started the training process. I've already got a light hold in there. So that you'll find that makes a difference too. Uh, however, if you're gonna go that route, mustache oil or beard oil, you wanna be using that at night. Uh, don't use this without this, because as Matt pointed out, this is a salt. So I don't see it, I mean, 
I haven't noticed any damage on my mustache, but I do use a mustache oil at night, so that's conditioning it. But again, for the holding effect, I think it's totally worth it. But what you I was just gonna say for the rest of us who maybe don't want to have a mustache of this volume. Stature. Because I do have, you know, a little mustache up here with my goatee. Size matters. Yes. Uh, I do use a small pair of scissors. and That's just... a goatee, by the way. I mean, that's a, a circular beard. Yeah, it's also called an Aryan. Um, so I like to... <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. We have this on film. No, okay, so let's... Actually, I think we really should discuss this. What is a Van Dyke? Well... This is kind of a Van Dyke yeah. without the handlebar mustache. A goatee. No, you can have a handlebar. A goatee is just this. Yeah, it's a that's goat. a goatee. A goat. This would be considered a circle beard or an Aryan. Those. That's a real term. Sorry, if you feel offended by that. Um, and then if you, but if yeah, the, the, if you disconnect them, that's the Van Dyke. When it's a mustache and a separate goatee, that's the Van Dyke. Well, it has to be pointed to be a Van Dyke. You can, yeah, the pointy. I guess that's part that's, of it. That is part of it. Okay. HowToGrowMustache.com, Matt. Live it. Okay. Love da, 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 da. it. Anyways. So, but yeah, a pair of scissors is great to keep it out of your uh, out of your mouth. The only thing I do with my goatee, and I, I, I wear these pretty normally, uh, I put a little oil. He keeps calling it that. You refer to yours as like a character. <laughs> Jonathan is not a character. <laughs> like a friend of yours. Jonathan is a friend of mine. Jeremiah like a child. was a bow down. <laughs> Frog. <laughs> well, anywho. Um, I just put a little oil because it does start getting a little dry over time. And sometimes in the shower, I'll rub a little shampoo in here just to make sure it doesn't get all nasty or there's food or... Yeah, you should always be shampooing your face yeah. with her. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, granted, they sell all types of products now for mustache and beards. It's the same as this hair. It, it is. Hair. It really, it's just a, gra a money grab at this point. There's Everyone and their mother is selling like, Higher some price, beard product. Higher price, lower volume. Exactly. What else you got? Um, but yeah, something like this, in fact, uh, in fact, I will demo using a little oil. And I like to just put it either in the palm of my hands or you can also do the tips of your fingers, you know, and just work it around. You know, if you do your palm, you can kind of then rub it in. But the number one thing you're trying to prevent is the dry flakiness. No, no, no one wants to have a dry flaky facial friend on their face. It's and a lot of this, I mean, you, you don't usually, <clears throat> like this is my no, problem. No, but I mean, I can, if, if I don't use an oil, you go like this and it's just like a, like a snowflakes. Even still? Not now. Yeah, if you when oil, you're first like, growing it out, yeah. you might, because the hair follicle is breaking through this, the, the, the skin, yeah. and it's wider and wider, so you're gonna get flaking and stuff like that. But I mean, like, people talk about it like it's an everyday dandruff thing, and yeah. I don't understand that. I mean, and, and you see all these products now that are supposed to deal with that, but back in the 60s and 70s when people were growing beards, no one talked about this stuff, and they had beautiful beards, majestic yeah. even. Uh, when it comes to beard oil and mustache oil, I'd like to, you know, this is piggyback on, on Matt's little thing here. Um, I use it, I love it, but I use it at night. I find a lot of guys, again, really? don't get proper instruction. They use it during the day, and they're walking down the street with these greasy looking, yes. I just came off the street. I've seen beers. that. Yes. This guy, I'm not gonna say who, somebody I recently met, they just had it, like it looked like maple syrup in their beard, yeah. and I was like, don't use what it is wrong the day. with you? Yeah, what yeah. did you just eat? <laughs> don't use it during the day, because I mean, use it at night when- But don't you worry about like rubbing, like rolling around your pillows, No, your use it while you're watching TV, an hour before you go to bed, it'll absorb. But okay, like, I don't like use it during the day. Not like before you go to bed, like, your even routine. Like, you get them from work, yeah. put a little oil in. Same thing with okay. mustache wax, too. You see that being misused, too, and I, I blame this on like, extreme facial hair shows, where people extreme are learning- Extreme facial hair shows! Where people are learning about this stuff for the first time, and they're, they're looking up to these guys that are competing. Where you're supposed to get the attention from the judges and the audience for these, you know, for cheering. And they have these crazy amount of Insectoid. Products. Like, you don't want these, like, thin, thin, wiry, insectoid-type uh, handlebars. They didn't wear them like that back in the day. That's what they're doing nowadays. Is and it it's true like, people use eggs? Uh, egg white, people have used. Glue. You'll, you'll see Elmer's glue. Some people have to because their stashes are super big for the hold. But, like, that wiring, you don't want to look like an insect. And I see this over and over again. And it's almost to the point where it's accepted now. But no one's shown properly how to use a mustache. So, mix. on that note... I want to see you style your big fat handlebar mustache for on on camera. Are we rolling, people? Are we rolling? Okay. Uh, well, I, don't, I want to see it. I don't have a mirror. Up close. But this is good. This is good. So first of all, do you want a mirror here, uh, Matt? What do you have? What do you have for combs? Well, I just have this. Let's little pick guy. these apart. I like you have this. that too. Yeah. Okay, so this is my problem right here with these combs. These are sold especially for people with mustaches. So someone like Matt, who has a little bit of facial hair yeah. like that, it's fine. But for someone like me, who's growing out a handlebar, you want to stay away from mustache combs. And I'll tell you why, because every time, look at that, see how thin those teeth are? You can't even see through them. This will pull out the hairs that you're uh, growing. Yeah. So for small hair, it's okay. Long hair, no, no yeah, deal. Yeah, yeah. 
for long mustaches, I don't care. Don't buy the wooden one. The wooden ones are even bad too because they splinter in between the teeth and it's tough for them to sand in there during the manufacturing process. So you get all these little splinters that will also grab on the hairs. But, the, so the hipster wooden combs, no deal either. Yeah, no, I wouldn't. Um, what I would do is save yourself some money and get cheap black plastic comb, the type of the two size teeth. Now see, you can see in between those teeth. Yeah. Even the small ones you can see through. The standard one you see at a barber shop, the one that's for 50 cents at the grocery store. If they are tight bristles like that, just make sure they're, they're soft, they're gonna bend with it, just in case it does get caught, it's gonna pull through. But get a black plastic unbreakable comb. And this is what you wanna use. And again, when you get out of the shower, immediately start training. And it's all about combing up. Cause Sweep you, the leg. Sweep the leg. You have a problem with that. No sensei. No mercy. Sweep the leg. Um, you want to train the mustache. Another big misconception, people say twisting the mustache. Don't twist your mustache. Really? So that kind of that famous thing, twisting? Yeah, the don't twist, do don't, don't do the twisting thing because what happens is um, during the course of the day, it starts to unwind. When you're twisting it up with wax, it, you're, just, you're setting tension like a spring. So during the course of the day, it'll start unwinding. You don't want that. You want to bend like this when you're putting wax in. So you see this with scotch tape too. When people use scotch tape to like lay out different, you know, when you used to make flyers back and they stretch the scotch tape, put something down. During the course of the, that being taped there, the tension releases and starts pulling the image you're taping down. Same thing with this. You're creating this spring that's gonna unwind. So don't do that. So application of product. So how do you? Again, <clears throat> alum first. When I get out of the shower, wet my fingers on the block and then just right here. Just put it right in like that. And you find this helps to shape it, or yeah, it already gets it going like this. Okay. Because it can. You want to. You don't want the wax to do it all the work. I mean, a lot of people use wax like they you know, want it to do all the work. But no, whatever trick you can use, training it is huge. So with or without the alum, even though I highly do recommend this, just cut it out, comb it first, part it, and comb it up. So I'm ready for the money shot. Let's put the product in. Okay. Mustache wax. This is actually good that we're doing this because a lot of people get mustache wax and they don't know how to use it first. They think they're it's like, chapstick. Well, they, no, it's just like, it's hard. It's like <laughs> a good um, good mustache wax is typically hard because it's made beeswax. out of wax. Uh, beeswax is one of the ma major ingredients. So people don't know how to use this. It's not soft or whatever. Um, what I recommend doing if you're new at this, maybe a hair dryer or putting the lid back on. And just, or if you live in Phoenix, leave it in your car for yeah, an hour. No, don't do that. Put it under hot water in the sink. That'll soften the wax too. But I can tell you right now, once you start using this, it gets softer. I can't explain that, but it will get softer. But what I do is the uh, bulldozing, uh, what I call it, with my thumbnail. That was my nickname in high school. That was not your nickname in high school. It's the first time this season he said that, folks. Um, maybe. But you, you take your uh, thumbnail, press it down, and just bulldoze across like that. See? Oh, yeah. Bulldozed. Bulldozed. And this, by doing this every day on the top of the wax, it makes the wax softer. I don't know why, but yeah, like so, less than a pea size amount I'm using here. That's and tiny. Just emulsify it between my. That own. for all of this. No, that for this. Okay. So and just then, half. yeah, just half. I've been waiting for years to watch this. And then with what's left on my finger, I just put it underneath the mustache, and I turn it up like that to keep it out of my must, uh, mouth. Now you'll see people over waxing where their entire mustache looks like it's stuck to their face. Yes, it looks, looks like it's it looks gross. It's disgusting. It looks absolutely gross. And then, yeah, some more wax. So it should still look very natural. It's natural. Mustaches, handlebar mustaches should be natural looking. You don't want people to know you're using product. And people wreck that every it's time. kind of like just for men. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But the thing is, and again, I, I really give this to like these extreme facial hair shows. You're just looking up to the wrong people when it comes to doing an everyday, Simple mustache flare, if you It's will. not like you're going to a competition every yeah. day. Yeah, those, those guys are not showing the common man how to do it right, or how they did it back in the day. But the trick is <clears throat> the natural look. And that's it. And you could see beforehand, before I actually had product in there, the handlebars were going up because they're so trained. I've been doing this for six years. So all these stray little whiskers that you see um, on you know on your face, do you try to integrate them and pull them in, or you just kind of let them go? I do. Are you is it go? Are you going for like par? Are you going for eagle or birdie? Are you really trying to make it look, you know, completely yeah, I mean, together? Are you okay with a couple stragglers? I'm okay with a couple stragglers because again, I'm going for the natural look. Okay. When I mean, because but if you, you can overdo it real easy with product. Okay. 
Um, again, other guys have used Elmer's glue or different types of glue, but white glue, I guess you would, to uh, hold together too. But I think that really is just overboard. It's too, you know, it's not like you're putting together a mohawk here. Now, I have to ask a question. Maybe we should have asked your significant other, Fran, about this. How, because the biggest thing when I was growing the mustache is the significant others, they got a problem with it. It's wiry, it's, you know, pokey, it's spiky, the, you know, kissing, you know, showing a little affection to your we significant don't kiss. other. Oh. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, no, uh, I don't think that's true for all women. Okay, just, so some women are okay. So it's just a case by case basis. It's case by case basis. Okay. In fact, you should get that out of the way when you first meet this person online. Just be like, this is staying you optional. Or even if you don't have one, just make sure you get that on the table beforehand. Okay. Because some days you might. All right. So let's move along. I think I think we've covered um, actual shaping. Um, well, I thought I you know also I might mention. See, I got some vitamin E here. Uh, when it comes, this is and this right here is uh, my own pre-shape, uh, pre oh, no, I'm sorry, uh, Wicked Cookie Duster. It's actually mustache wax remover, but it can also double as a beard oil. Um, and this is all fine and good. It's great. It gets the wax out, but you can also... So it's just an oil. Well, it's a, a combination of different oils okay. that will actually remove wax. That said, I should probably point this out. If you're... Um, Movember is happening in the wintertime on the East Coast and whatnot in parts of the world. Certain lip balms have contain oils and wax in them that will actually eat the wax out of your mustache. So be weary of that. Uh, sesame uh, and almond oil are definitely um, something to look for in a lip balm if you're using it. Just keep it away from your mustache. Okay. So there are certain oils that will eat wax. Um, another thing is make your own. This, how much does this go for? This is Parasa's oh, yeah, oil. Oh yeah, 15, 20 dollars. Yeah, you can make your own for, you can save yourself a ton of money. Just get some sweet almond oil or some, um, um, Kukui or um, argon, different. So every you know, each oil nowadays you read about. Like, and like a natural. Pastor. But you always read like the closest thing to the natural oils of your skin. Every oil can say that because that's pretty much all oils are. Um, so any oil, even olive oil in your beard, will will do it right. It will Maybe be if you're Italian. Well, that's where this whole conditioning your hair with olive oil comes from. It's from the Italians back in the day. But regardless, uh, so make your own. It costs pennies to make. Uh, I've already given you a couple oils to choose from. You can, and if you want a scent, you can add a couple drops of an essential oil to it. And it's as simple as that. And this is vitamin E I happen to bring along with me that I actually add to my pre-shave oils when I make my own. Uh, just to add a little more uh, uh, no, uh, nutrients or moisturizing uh, benefits to the oil. But all in all, any oil is going to be great for your beard or mustache. And use it at night. Use it at night while you're watching TV. Cool. I was just going to add, you know, I know we've talked a lot about conditioning and taking care and shaping, but for someone like me who does have more of a, a tame version of facial hair compared to Doug's, I, I have found a lot of use of, of these kind of small Ugh. mustache trimming. Sorry, but it's great. If you want to, if you're going Biggest letdown of my life with those mustache razors. Well, hey. Great I, idea. I great. Know. Great. <clears throat> I mean, this is a beautiful design. This is a double edge. Razor here, Mercur did it right. They you got the small end here, right, the larger right there here for shaping. Yeah, it, I mean, in theory, works beautifully. However, the blades for these things, suck. they're a little lackluster. They're hand snapped out of the sheets, so they're already dulling them before you even get them in your hands. Um, Don't expect them to be like, wow, laser gone. No. It's just no, it, it it does tug a little bit. I, I'd stay. But away I mean, from you're this. only getting use a chevette. Okay, yeah. For me, you're only getting like tiny little parts of. You know, you're, you're at the corner of your, your lip or whatever. There we go. Yeah, for shaping and styling, I highly recommend using a chevette instead to get in there mm -hmm. uh, rather than those things. I mean, again, those are like these. They I think it's, neat, it's, it's, maybe... it's a money grab. I mean, I really don't okay. find them effective at all. No offense. No, sure. Hey, I didn't But as a it, professional. It's, it's, it's an off-the-shelf product. So I guess that kind of wraps it up. I guess you're right. So happy November. Happy no-shave November. Wait. Oh, yeah, that's right. There's two of them, isn't there? Um, that are often confused for the same thing. You'll see people like, I'm growing a mustache for No Shave November. You grow the mustache for November, not No Shave November. No, no Shave November actually started on college campuses originally. It wasn't a foundation like November. November actually was a concept I think that came, well, most good ideas come to, uh, in bars when you're severely uh, wasted. That's how November started, I do believe. But it was a foundation concept. I think it's just an excuse to not shave for a lot of people. Yeah, but the mustache you have to shave to release the beast. But yeah, no no shave November, on the other hand. Yeah, that is. That's just 
but it's not the same. November and No Shave November, two different animals. Just happen at the same time of year. Well, Merry f***ing Christmas. I guess that's all we have today. <laughs> we'll see you next time. No. Oh, uh, what are we doing? Oh! And there's one more thing. If you comment, like, subscribe, and... Comment? Like, subscribe. And you... share. Share. Sharing means caring, folks. <clears throat> now, let's face it, we need to get the word out there about what shaving. It also means communism. <laughs> no, that's not... Anyways, this, with those two jerks on it, could be yours. That's right, folks. We will choose a winner, as you probably already know by now. So uh, do as I say and as I do. And with that being said, we'll see you next time on a riveting episode of I'd Lather Be Shaving. Do that again. Riveting! Of I'd Lather Be Shaving. <laughs>